This is the spoiler-filled review of Men in Black International. The spoiler-free review is down in the description. So, I really had a lot of fun with this movie. I said in the 2016 Ghostbusters review that you can read on the blog down there, because I didn't make a video for it, because I didn't have my YouTube channel at the time. But I said that Chris Hemsworth, you know, was the best part of that movie. He had a lot of fun, and it really shows here. He, he was like the mixture of his character from Ghostbusters while being the mixture of his character from Thor Ragnarok. You know, he wasn't as idiotic as he was in Ghostbusters, because that movie, he's kind of the dumb blonde, you know, t type. But he had a little bit of that, but then he also had the Thor Ragnarok, but he wasn't, you know, super, like, ha oh, you know, kind of the Ragnarok. But it was a mixture of those. It was like, they took those two characters and got a happy medium. That was really good. Also, Liam Neeson, obviously this is the spoiler review, so I'm going to reveal who he is. When it was revealed that Liam Neeson was the villain the whole time, once that's revealed, he was so good at his villain role. He's been in a lot of villain roles, like with Batman Begins playing Rachel Ghoul, and he was fantastic in this. He was probably one of the best Men in Black villains after Jimmy Clement in Men in Black 3. He definitely had a lot of fun with this. The plot for this one was also the most interesting. The other one's kind of dated. The third one, I really enjoyed the time travel element of the third one, and a lot of times that doesn't work, but for that movie it did. And this was fun, even if it was kind of, you know, we gotta find this artifact that's gonna destroy the world, which is literally every single Men in Black movie. It's kind of basic, but the way they did it was different enough, and it was fun enough that I found myself enjoying it. I really enjoyed the dance club scene when he's kind of interrogating the alien there. That was fun. I enjoyed Chris Hemsworth's introduction scene when he's... Uh, playing poker with the other aliens, and I swear, they knew that everybody was going to make Marvel jokes, because there were at least two or three Thor references kind of subtly placed in there without being, like, breaking the fourth wall meta. Like, when he's drinking and he goes, I want another drink, or something to that effect. I was half expecting him to throw that drink on the ground, but they didn't do that, because obviously, you know, Marvel would probably sue, <laughs> even though this used to be a Marvel comic. And then also when he first meets Tessa Thompson's character, it's like, have we met before? Even though they didn't meet before in the movie. But we, they all knew that we were making that joke. And so they decided to throw that in there as kind of a see what we're doing kind of, kind of joke there. And also when the alien you know, throws the hammer and he grabs, or when, when Chris Hemsworth throws the hammer and, goes, and he throws it, and it's like a super tiny hammer, the alien catches it like, oh, I did not think you would be able to catch it. That's surprising. They know what we're doing. They know that we're calling this movie as Guardians of the Galaxy. They know that we're doing that. I also really enjoyed the character of Pawnee. He basically played the role of Frank the Pug did in the first three movies, or the first two movies. But unlike Frank the Pug, he's actually funny. He had some very funny insults for Chris Hemsworth's character because he just did not like him. And he was just hilarious. I was cracking up the whole time that he was on screen. He was by far the best character in this movie, except for Chris Hemsworth. He was the best alien character in this movie. And so my one complaint, though, is it is a little bit of a retread of the first movie. Um, it, it has, you know, very standard, this person is recruited to be part of the MIB, and they go through all these tests, and then, okay, we need to go find this artifact. And I think it was, but after the, about the first third, it starts to kind of do its own thing, and that's what I really enjoyed about it, is it was different enough there was also a little bit of familiarity, but not too much that he went, oh, this is just the first movie again. No, it was great. I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the action scenes, the car chases were very fun. It's probably the best out of the franchise for me. So I'd say yes, go see Men in Black. It's an 8 out of 10 for me. I'd give it a 4 out of 5 stars. If it weren't such a retread, it probably would be a little bit higher on the ranking, but because that first third is just so familiar. If they had done something a little bit different with the first third of the movie, it would probably be higher. But still, it's worth it's worth going to see. Ignore Rotten Tomatoes. It's actually a very fun movie. I quite enjoyed it.